Okay. Um, speaking of logs, what about a log function? Can we take the derivative of that? Now, I should at this point kind of say, as a disclaimer, that um, although you can find the gradients of any curve at a point, not all curves have kind of defined derivatives or easily found derivatives, okay? That, that's just as the precursor. But a lot of them do tend to have them. Now, a log function, if you remember, looks roughly like this. It's actually the inverse of an expon exponential function. So if you reflect it in the line y equals to x, you should... Um, yeah, that's, that's what you get, right? Um, just some kind of important things. There's actually an asymptote here. Should use a rule for that. And what's going on over here? What's our intercept? So if this is for y equals to log base e of x. <coughs> so when x is equal to 1, y equals to 0. Yeah. Uh, you can chuck in a reference point too if you want. Uh, maybe like, well, you can do e. That's a nice one, isn't it? So e one. Cool. E one. E one. Extension one. Now have a think. Just looking at this curve, right? Don't think about like what would the gradient, what would the derivative be? Because before you start thinking about derivatives, just kind of get an intuition of like, what are the gradients at various points? Have a think about it. Decreasing. So what's it? Is it positive or negative? <coughs> it's going up from left to right. Like think back to those definitions. Yeah. So it's going to be positive. Does it ever go negative? No. Not really, right? Because at this point it seems to flatten out. And if you um, <coughs> use a graphing software, you'll see it more clearly that um, it, it very closely approaches a horizontal line. Now, if a gradient's horizontal, what kind of gradient is? If a line gradient, if a line's horizontal, what kind of gradient is that? Zero, right? So we can kind of make an observation that seems like this gradient function, I'll do it in red, will approach zero, but never quite reach. Yeah? yeah. So we're kind of thinking, yeah, it's going to go like to there, sort of, at some point. How, how does it start off? It starts off down here. I guess that's the curve where the curve starts. But like, well, how do we describe that gradient? Infinity. Infinity, yeah. If it was a straight line, it'd be infinity. Sorry? It's pretty much a straight line. Um, obviously, if it's, a, if it's an actual straight line, it's, it's undefined. Yeah, it's an, it'd be an asymptote. Um, but, like, just after that point, we just, this gradient, you could say, is pretty steep, which, if you're thinking about derivatives, is going to give you a pretty high y value, right? Because when gradients are steep, they, they're much larger values, right? So we can say it starts off, maybe, up the top here. And then, gradually, it kind of meets. Does that look familiar? What is it? Is that like, it's sort of like an inverse, but not like, oh, it reflects, reflects. Yeah, maybe. Reflects sort of like a reflection. This oh, is actually okay. a curve you've seen before. That's an exponential, but like mine. But like the other way, right? What are they, what are they called? Oh, hyperbolas, right. If you had the other half of it, right, if a logarithm was defined in the negative part, maybe we would have the other part. But this is actually a hyperbola defined for the positive values of x, I suppose. So we can kind of mark that in. Well, so here's the thing. This is like what we say about rules, right? And in fact, it, it is that if you have y equals to ln of x, or log base e of x, the derivative is 1 on x, OK? And that's just building intuition from a visual perspective. It's still pretty hard, though, because like, you kind of threw out some other functions before, like, oh, you know, this could be like an exponential curve. Um, so I, I want to show you how you can actually derive this as well. Uh, we're looking for what the derivative is of this guy. We're expecting it to be 1 of x. We're not too sure yet, but we'll find out. The way we can do it is you take this function, okay, and you rewrite it in exponential form. Like, go back to things that you can find the derivatives of. So no, x equals y yeah. yeah, yeah, x equals e to the y, yeah. So the base is always the base, um, the result is the power, and then, yeah, you get from there. So e to the y is equal to x, okay? Oh, it's the inverse. Right, yeah. They are, then, remember, they are inverse functions, yeah. Um, is it the inverse? What do you mean the inverse? You're like you're swapping x and y. Um, no, it's not, it's not the inverse, Matt. Matt, 
It's not the end of it, like you're rewriting in a different form. So you're not changing the function. Yeah. yeah. So be careful how you say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so wh why do we write in this form? Well, because now all we can do is we can find the derivative of this more easily. Okay? Because if you think about it, this is x equals e to the y. Yeah. Y. Oh, just swapped around. Okay. And if we take the derivative of this, like, I'm looking for dy dx. Okay. I don't have that yet, but that's okay. What if I found dx dy? What would that be in this situation? Because remember, when you take x, the derivative of exponential functions, they stay the same. But I'm looking for dy dx. How can I find dy dx? Oh, the y dx. Yeah. Y and e to the y. Yeah, what'd you say, Lynn? Yeah, what'd you say? Yeah. How do we get to dy dx from this? Yeah, we just flip it. I think that's, I don't know if that's what you said, but yeah. Right. dy dx. Would just be 1 on e to the y. And hang on, e to the y before, what is e to the y equal to? It's just x, right? Yeah. So, dy dx, and we'll go back up to here, that's just 1 on x, which is what we kind of were thinking before, but now we've actually proved it using, um, I mean, there's no real rules here. It's like changing different forms and then taking the derivative there. Shut that down for me. Yeah, well, I think it's a, like trust your instincts, but also make sure you prove things.